My name is Annette Robertson, and I'm a member of the editorial programs team for Big Law Business. I specifically focus on building programs that engage Bloomberg's legal audiences in face-to-face -to -face topics that our news team covers every day. Bloomberg has almost 1,000 reporters and editorial staff based in Washington, D.C. to bring you the latest news from the White House, Congress, and the federal regulatory agencies. Today, we're fortunate to have Bloomberg BNA's White House reporter here to share an update on what's going on in Washington. Please join me in welcoming Cheryl Bolin. Good afternoon. So I was asked to speak to you today about what exactly is happening with regulatory policy in Washington these days. So for the next six hours, I'll be, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'll, I'll summarize for you. But the short answer is that there is a lot happening all over, at the White House, the Congress, and at the agencies themselves. I'm a news reporter for Bloomberg BNA, and I'm based at the White House, where we get yelled at regularly by Sean Spicer. But I also specialize in regulatory policy, and I keep a close eye on OIRA, which you all know as the popular Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs. As an aside, the nomination of Naomi Rao to be the next administrator of OIRA has just been sent to the Senate, and I expect a confirmation hearing in the next week or two. Rao will be the president's point person on his deregulatory agenda. Which brings me to the most important development that I see in the regulatory landscape since President Trump took office. And that is his promised one in, two out executive order signed in January. The order, which requires agencies to take two deregulatory actions for every one regulation they want to issue, is the game changer, in terms of regulation at least, in this administration. Even more important than the one in, two out policy is the additional requirement that all new regulations be fully offset in this fiscal year. For the next fiscal year, which starts October 1st, agencies will be given regulatory budget caps and must fit all their regulations under those caps. For those of you who noticed that the White House released the President's budget on Tuesday, what I was looking for in the budget were those regulatory caps for agencies next year, which, surprisingly, the budget did not have. But let me explain. When President Trump took office, one of his very first actions was to freeze all pending regulations. A week later, he signed the one in, two out executive order. Deregulation has been at the top of the president's priority list since inauguration, and he hasn't let up yet. Since the order was signed, there has been much debate and discussion about how exactly to implement it. OIRA put out guidance, but there's still a lot of room for exceptions, exemptions, and guesswork. Tellingly, since the order was signed, not one agency has issued a single regulation that requires the two deregulatory actions and to be offset. I have been watching for such a rule to see how this new policy will work in practice. But according to law professionals at a recent American Bar Association conference, I may be waiting a while. There was a good bit of talk at the conference about whether agencies are going to try to regulate at all. It may be that the current deregulatory environment, all the messaging from the White House, and the stiff requirements of the new executive order just make it too difficult for agencies to bother regulating. The numbers bear this out. As of this morning, according to reginfo.gov, which is the government's uh, database for tracking regulations, agencies in the Trump administration had submitted just 39 regulations to OIRA for review. At this point in the Obama administration, in his first year, agencies had submitted 123 rules for review. 
As of today, there are 19 regulatory actions pending, 10 of which are from the Department of Health and Human Services. And most of those involve Medicare payment schedules and fee systems. What this means is that the Trump administration is doing the very bare minimum when it comes to regulating. Meanwhile, other executive orders targeting specific rules, like the fiduciary rule or the Obama's Clean Power Plan, have been targeted for elimination. At the beginning of this year, I asked several sources, what happens if agencies simply don't regulate? And the answer, like so many issues, is that regulating moves to the courts. Fundamentally, agencies regulate because they have to. Congress passes a law, and the law tells an agency, like the Environmental Protection Agency, to come up with specific ways to implement that law. It's a little more complicated in that some laws are very precise about exactly what kind of regulation must be promulgated and by when. Other laws, though, are vague and just tell an agency to periodically check for something like worker safety and then issue a rule if needed. It's easier for an agency to postpone regulating under a vague law. What's trickier is when an agency is required to regulate by a certain deadline under a statute and doesn't. Then it's up to whatever group that's interested in the law to bring that agency to court to force action. So my prediction is this. I believe agencies, many of which are not yet headed by a political appointee, are simply in a holding pattern. It appears no one wants to be the first agency to try out this new one-in, two-out policy. And everyone is looking around to see how this will work out. So like so much else in Washington, uncertainty is the order of the day. And until some bold agency takes the first step or the lawsuits start flying, I believe that uncertainty in regulating will remain for the foreseeable future. Thank you and good luck.